What's up guys, it's your boy Justin, and welcome back to another Pro Hackers tutorial. Um, haven't done one of these in a while, but I wanted to because I had something kind of cool um, that I figured I'd make a video on. Uh, today I'm doing Aimware's Hit Markers. Um, so, everyone knows what they look like. Uh, I saw another sheet that added them. Um, it's called Fatality.Win by Tukari. And I actually had the intention to make these for a long time. Um, but I guess they're a little harder than you'd initially think. Um, it's not, once you understand, like, the concept behind how you should do it, it's really not difficult. But, um, you know, if you think about it, like, it sounds a lot simpler than it really is, because you just think, alright, you know, you have a normal hit marker, you draw it in the center of your screen. So for aimers, you just draw it, um, wherever they got hit. But, uh, the problem is trying to find where they actually did like because it's not just a hitbox position if you look at the player hurt event which is most definitely used inside of your current crosshairs um you'll notice that there's a hitbox but there's no actual you know location uh like xyz coordinates of where the bullet hit so um the goal with aimers hit markers or my variation of it i don't know how they did it is to basically um associate a bullet impact event with a player hurt event, and uh, that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. So, first of all, I'm um, setting up the header file, obviously right now, I just called it aw underscore hitmarker.h, um, and we have two structs, one for impact info, one for hitmarker info. Impact info contains a float, uh, the xyz, so basically a vector, but you'll see why I'm doing it like this later. Basically, when we get information from the event, um, we're going to be getting x, y, and z values anyway, so it makes it a little bit easier. And then also the time, it's a long, long, um, so that's because I store mine as epoch, um, in milliseconds, epoch timestamps, or Unix timestamps rather, and they're quite large, especially in milliseconds, so, um, that's why it's a long, long. Um, and then hitmarker info just contains an impact, um, and also the alpha, we're doing this because I'm gonna make it fade out, and, um, yeah, in the class, some public methods that we'll use will be one to initialize it, one to paint it, and just uh, let me go ahead and go over something real quick. You're going to need to do this. Um, this is to simplify some stuff because we're going to be putting our listeners um, for the events inside of this hit marker class, um, so we don't really need to hook uh, fire event client side. Your base probably does have that no matter what, but it just makes it a little easier to implement, and I am making a tutorial on it, so I figured that was pretty importante. Um, okay, so... One sec, BGL spamming me, but I'm trying to make this video, so I'm just going to ignore him, unfortunately. Um, so when you're implementing iGame Event Listener 2, there are some required functions. Those are Fire Game Event, which accepts an event, and that is overrided, obviously. And then you're also going to have um, Get Event Debug ID, which returns an integer. We're going to be returning a hard-coded value for that. Um, why did I write it like this? I'm a fucking moron. Alright, um, and then we're going to have um, two event handlers for the things we're going to be calling, just to neaten things up a little bit. So I'm going to have a player hurt event, and also oops, a bullet impact event. Um, and then we're going to have another function called, I call it get player. Um, usually when you're working with, with events, you know, these aren't required, but I, I just have this. Um, what it does is it accepts a user ID, you know, from the raw information that you get in the event. And from that user ID, it uses the engine interface to get the index of the entity in the uh, entity list and then gets the base entity for the player from there. So it just makes it a little bit easier, a little bit less sloppy when you're actually writing it. And then we're going to have two vectors for impact info, we're going to call that impact, and also for hit marker info, and we'll call that hit markers. Okay, so, um, uh, by the way, singletons are bad, so do it like this instead. 0x41 is going to get mad at me if he watches this video, um, but don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and create a C++ file for this. Why am I writing that? Okay. AW underscore hitmarker 
and um, pragma once. All right, perfect. So go ahead and create an instance of our hit marker class. Boom, better than a singleton. Okay, uh, I guess first we'll initialize it. So this is quite easy. Um, basically what you're doing here is uh, adding listeners for the events that we're gonna need to handle. So the only ones we're gonna need here are, um, oops. the only ones we're gonna need here are um, player hurt and bullet impact. So the way this works essentially is since our um, hit marker class is basically, you know, a game event listener, we can just pass this and uh, then of course the name of the event and server side is going to be false for both of these. So that's player hurt and then we'll have bullet impact. Um, while we're up here, I will write some of the methods that are going to be smaller. Where was I? Let me pin this real quick. Um, we'll do, I guess, these two and also get player. I guess let's do get player first. That is going to return C base entity. And like I said earlier, you can get the index of the player by using the engine interface. And it would be get player for user ID. Pass that in, and then um, use the entity list interface. My bad. To get a player from that index, and you're good to go. Um, next up, we're gonna do the two functions that are actually required um, to implement game event listener, which are these two. That's why they're both override. Um, this one, like I said, we're gonna return a hard coded value. So we can just do that real quick. We will return 0x2a and, uh, okay, yeah, and for fire game event, we are going to basically um, call whatever event is associated with the information we receive in here. What's wrong with this? Oh, whoopsie. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that they have uh, this hit marker mode enabled real quick. Um, in Penguin, you can select if you wanna have the default hit markers that you'd usually see in like every other cheat, or if you wanna have aim horizontal. I call them hit position hit markers, but you know, this video is gonna be called like skew hit markers because that's what everyone will recognize them as. Um, and then we're just gonna make sure that we have our event and that we have local player. Otherwise, we can return. And then down here, um, let's go ahead and actually just make these two functions that we're going to be calling, which would be player hurt and bullet impact. And uh, both of those will just get past the actual event. Um, the event name and player hurt. Then we will call player hurt with this event. And then of course the same goes for bullet impact. Um, now getting down to these, let's see my notes real quick. I'll do this first. Okay, so uh, in here, what we're going to be doing is storing um, basically all of the shots fired by local player and the times they occurred and where they hit. Um, and uh, technically, they're not going to automatically be removed, but you'll see what we're going to do with that timing later because they will be removed um, in the player hurt event when we loop through them. But in here, like I said, we're just logging the location and time but we have to make sure that we're the shooter. So go ahead and get the shooter to do that. We're just gonna call this shooter. Um, and we can now call get player with the event, get int for the user ID. Um, if 
if you're curious about how any of these or why any of these events work like this uh, and like what I'm writing as far as those go, they are publicly documented on like Allied Modders, I think what the website is. So you can look on there. Uh, so if we don't have a shooter or the shooter is not our player, then we can also return. Um, you know, we just want to make sure that we're the ones that shot the bullet. Uh, and then here's where we're going to actually log the info. So we'll set up. Oh. We'll set the x coordinate to event get float x, and then the same thing for y and z. This is why, by the way, I said I was storing them in um, floats, not a vector. We're going to convert them to a vector later when we need to, but for now, this is all good. And then, of course, the time is just going to be whatever the current time is. Like I said, I, I don't know if I actually mentioned this, but I use a epoch timestamps um unix timestamps that's the second time i've made that mistake you know same shit uh and then also let's go ahead and log or actually store that in the vector that we created earlier in our hit marker file um i think that's all we really need to do in here next would be the player herd event um which is right here lucky for us um what we're gonna be doing in here is making sure that we're the ones that hurt an enemy and uh, if we are, we're going to be looping through all of the bullet impacts that have occurred within the past 25 milliseconds. Um, I'll explain that as I get there, but I'm just going to get started on actually writing it. So we're going to store the attacker, which is, you know, hopefully going to be us. And also the victim aka the person we shot and um, that's all I really need if you want like in Penguin, there's an option where you can make the color of the hit marker health based you could obviously log the damage and do that if you'd like to but um, certainly not required and I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial um, if we don't have the attacker or we don't have the victim or the attacker is not our player then we can return since we don't need to worry about it um, and otherwise we are going to go ahead and iterate through the bullet impacts that are recent and find whichever one's best for uh, for this specific player hurt event so the way I did this was I looped through them and I basically compared the distance of each one to the distance of the enemy at the time that we hurt them so first we're going to get the enemy's position um, so the victim get origin And uh, we're going to set some stuff up. So I'm going to call this best impact and also the best impact distance. And also the current time. Oops. Okay. Um, and then we're just going to loop through them. So I'm going to create an iterator here. We'll just call it iter. Um, and when we're looping through this, we're actually not going to, you know, move on to the next one in the definition of the loop. We're going to handle that later. We'll just start here, and we will end here. And like I said, we're going to worry about moving on to the next element in the vector later. Okay, so first thing we should check is if this is really old. Um, so when I say really old, I don't really mean really old. Um, we're basically just checking if it's over 25 milliseconds old. This value is kind of random. Um, basically, when you shoot somebody, there could be more than one bullet impact called. Um, actually, there usually will be, because if you think about it, you shoot somebody, the bullet's going to go through them, it's going to hit a wall behind them, and perhaps it, you know, it hit another wall on the way there. If you have auto wall and you shot them through a wall, there could be like, you know, three or four bullet impact uh, events triggered each time you shoot a bullet and hit an enemy. So that's why we're going to find the one closest to them. Um, and I figure uh, the bullet impact and the player hurt are called like instantaneously. 
Um, you know, you're never going to have a player hurt called more than 25 milliseconds after a bullet impact, but the bullet impact will always be called first. You can definitely be sure of that. Um, as far as 25 milliseconds go, I just figure you're not going to hit a person twice within 25 milliseconds. It's somewhat unrealistic, so um, that is why I picked that value. But, you know, it's probably going to be more like a millisecond or two, or maybe not even a change at all. Um, next up, we're going to get the position of the impact. So we have the X, Y, and Z that we stored. Um, and then we're going to get the current distance. So the position and the distance from the enemy position. And if the current distance is less than the best impact distance, or the best impact distance is equal to negative 1, which is the default value, basically meaning that we haven't found one yet, we're just going to set the best impact distance to distance. And the best impact to hitter. Actually, you don't want to dereference that because this is an impact info and an iterator works pretty much the same way as a pointer to an impact info. Um, and that's all good. And then just make sure that you move on to the next one down here. Okay, so that's perfect. Um, and then if the best impact distance is still negative one, that means somehow we couldn't associate any of these impacts with, uh, with the you know, the player hurt event. Um, so that means that none of them were called within the past 25 milliseconds, which doesn't really make sense, but it's just kind of there as a, a little safety precaution. Um, and then down here, you're going to want to go ahead and log the, that a hit marker should be placed in that position. Um, so hit marker info, call it info again. And the impact will be the best impact. Um, and then the only other thing we have is alpha, right? Yeah. So that's 255. So we can fade out later, and then we'll go ahead and say hit marker stop push back info. Okay, so that's all done. What else do we need? Uh, we just need the paint event now, right? Yep. So we'll go ahead and put that. I'm just gonna put that up here. It's gonna be somewhat long, um, but certainly not too complicated. Okay. So in the paint event, um, first of all, we're just gonna. Go ahead and actually, you know what? Did I ever in initialize this? Let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna go ahead and include the what did I call them? A where hit marker dot h, and then wherever you initialize your cheat, do it right here. Call initialize there, um, and uh, where else can we? We're gonna be calling stuff. Oh, in here too. We're going to call this, let's call it right after auto wall damage. Let's call it paint. Um, I'm not going to do the check in here to see if they have it enabled or not. I'm going to do that in here. So, where did I also have that right here? Um, Alright, perfect. And uh, we're going to make sure that we should be actually drawing anything. So, if not... Engine is connected, or we're not in game. Or we don't have local player. These are all scenarios where we're gonna make sure that, you know, our vectors are empty and we're not gonna draw anything. So if impact isn't empty, my God. Then we'll go ahead and clear it. If um, hit markers, I think I called it. Yep. Is not empty, then we'll go ahead and clear that. Oops. And then we'll return. Um, and then down here, we're going to basically um, loop through them and we're going to handle fading out, you know, adjusting the alpha converting the three-dimensional vector to a point on our screen and then drawing the actual hit marker. So um, let's just make sure we store the time up here so we don't have to keep calling it below. And then we're going to iterate through them the same exact way that we did before. So um, let's go ahead and check if it should be expired. And after it expires, it's going to start fading out. 
until it's completely faded out and then we'll erase it from the vector so expire is going to be if the time plus 2000 is before the current time so basically for more than two seconds into the future after we initially created this hit marker um then right here i'm gonna have what i call i call it al alpha interval this is basically the rate at which we fade out um so what i usually use for this is 255 divided by 50 so basically over 50 calls to paint you know in your paint reverse hook or whatever uh it's going to fade out completely um so you can really make it fade out faster or slower by adjusting this 50 number right here but i've been using that and it looks pretty good so if it's expired then we're gonna go ahead and subtract our alpha interval from the alpha Oh, what am I doing? Oh, silly mistake here. This should be hit marker info. And we should be doing hit markers. That was a doozy. Um, this is going to be hit marker impact dot time. And then this is going to be iter alpha. Just a little bit more sense there. Okay. Um, if it's expired and our alpha is less than or equal to zero, that means that Basically, it's over two seconds old, and we completely faded out already. Then we're going to go ahead and erase it. So, either equals hit markers dot erase. Either, and continue. And that should handle doing all the calculations for fading out. We're going to handle setting the color in the alpha later. But until then, we're going to go ahead and get the position of the, uh, the impact on the map. So, um vector and then we'll get our impact dot x y and z um and also we'll just specify pause 2d right here because we're going to use that right now um if we are not able to world to screen pause 3d to pause 2d um we're going to go ahead and move on and continue when i was initially writing this uh, I didn't include this line right here. I just press continue, or I just call continue. But since you're not actually moving on up here, if you don't do this, if this ever occurs where you can't convert the three-dimensional point to a two-dimensional point on your screen, um, it's just going to keep, you know, it's not going to ever move on. So it's just going to keep checking this, and it's going to freeze. It's not going to crash, so you can't really debug. It took me like an hour to find out why that was a problem when I was first writing this. It was like a major brain fart, and it bothered me a lot. So... You know, hopefully you don't have to go through the trauma that I've gone through. Um, we're just going to make this white. And then to actually make it fade out, make sure that you set the alpha to the alpha that we've established previously. Um, and then, you know, just draw a hit marker, basically. So I always let my users set a line size. Um, that's in my menu, hit marker dot size. Um, and then... Obviously, I'm going to go ahead and use the surface inf interface to set the color. What am I doing? Cool. See? Alright, and then uh, draw four lines. So, you know, I'm assuming that you probably already have code for drawing a hit marker somewhere in your sheet. But, um, the way that I always do this is the two-dimensional position dot x minus line size 2d dot y. Oops. Minus line size, and then like the way to think about it is like you have to you have to kind of cover all of the possibilities. So like minus 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 plus plus minus plus minus plus, and then like plus 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 plus. You know what I'm saying? Because um, you want to draw like a line like this, and then that, and then that, and then that. So um, it's really not rocket science, but not type today. I feel like that happens every time I make a video, I just like can't type. Um, y minus line size, x minus line size divided by 4, and y minus line size divided by 4. Okay, so we have to do what? Minus plus 
minus plus, and then plus minus, uh, plus minus, and then plus, oopsies. I don't know why I don't just use my mouse. Okay, so that should cover it. Um, yep. Yep. We're all good here. And uh, and then obviously we can just move on. So we can draw more than one at once. And I think that's all we're going to need. I think we should be good now. Whoops. Um, so let's go ahead and compile this and uh, give it a go. Yikes. Okay, can inject that. And uh, I'll just load my config real quick. What do we not need? Actually, I'll just turn the whole rage bot off completely since I don't want it to shoot automatically when I join the game. Um, I'll just shoot and you'll be able to see it working, hopefully, uh, if I did everything right. Um, yeah, I think it should be good. If you have any suggestions for these tutorials, let me know. Um, I kind of want to do event logs. I feel like event logs is like... I think somebody released the source code to proper event logs that didn't use the in-game stuff. But mine, mine look cool, and I could like teach you how to customize them and stuff. So maybe who knows? Um, we have a problem. It's time to find out what that problem is. All right, so we called initialize, right? Good. Uh, we called paint. It's problematic, isn't it? Player hurt, bullet impact. Um, that's correct. It's a bit strange, isn't it? I wonder why. It should be all good, right? Do my normal hit markers work? My normal hit markers work fine. Something's wrong here, yeah? What could I have possibly done wrong? If not event or not get local player. If... We have, up oh, there it is. I guarantee somebody saw that like earlier in the video and they were like, Justin, you absolute buffoon. What are you doing? They have a blunder there. Um, I'm gonna pause the video and wait like a minute or two because I need to wait before I re-inject. So yeah, just give me a minute. Okay, so I injected it again. Hopefully it actually works this time. You never know, though. When you do these things from the fly, on the fly, and there's always a bit of room for mistakes, unfortunately. But I think, hopefully, it'll be good. Okay, good. Um, so we notice that it fades out. Um, you can see it's like identical to Amor's hit marker. You hit somebody, it draws exactly where you hit them. Um, like I, I don't know if I talked about this. The problem was that you can't actually use the hitbox position from the um, from the player hurt event because uh, if you look at Amor's, it doesn't just draw at the location of the hitbox. That'll be like you know here, or here. It'll be in like set positions. It draws it like exactly where you hit them, and it doesn't follow the player. It's like where it actually hit them. So if I if I make these guys move around, Jesus, make these guys move around. If I if I hit that kid right there, you see how it draws it like you know where I hit them. And if I shoot them in the body, it, it stays where I initially hit them. So um, I guess it was a bit more difficult than you would initially think. But uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you have more suggestions for 
videos, um, let me know. Like I said, I might do a proper event logger tutorial because the code for mine is quite neat and easy to implement into your own sheet and you can customize it. There's a lot of room for that type of stuff, so who knows, maybe I'll do a video on that. But um, if you liked it, make sure you leave a like, make sure you subscribe for more stuff like this. Um, and yeah, peace.